Hi, I'm Lee Cottrell. Welcome to Cottrell Coding. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to bind the lists in .NET MAUI. In particular, I'm going to bind an array that I build behind the scenes and the code behind to an observable collection on the screen. I currently have a basic app built. Um, this layout comes from my previous video where I demonstrate how to bind the sliders and the labels. I'm just going to minimize that for now. I'm going to keep inside the vertical stack layouts. All right, so I need to do some stuff behind the scenes. Now, what I'm doing is technically a little unnecessary. I'm setting up for the, quote, right way to do this, unquote, where you have MVVM built, where your MVVM classes connect to a database and populate a data list from there. So I'm setting it up for that. So I'm doing a little bit longer than I need to be. To do this, I'm going to open up my Solution Explorer, and I'm going to create a new folder called Models. In models, we're going to um, create your classes that hold your data. So I'm right click, I'm going to add a new class, and I'm going to call it conversions because I'm going to have a list that shows um, converting from pounds to something else. Make your life simpler, please make sure this is a public class, otherwise it's private. If you don't and you try to use this elsewhere, you're going to get errors such as uh, this variable is more visible than conversions. So just make it public to make your life easy. Inside, I need to create a couple variables. Now, C Sharp, if you're not aware of it, has fast ways to do this. I'm going to create some properties. I'm going to use the prop macro. I type in prop, tab twice. It fills in a generic property. I'm going to put in my data types. I'm going to use string, name. Um, getting set of the standard getters and setters and AI is helping me here, but I don't want that So I'm going to use a double Multiplier all right, so that's a nice quick way to pull this off I'm going to create Default constructor And I'm going to create a parameterized constructor just because you should I may not use it, but you sh probably should have one I right click did quick reactions. Oh, you might not have seen that. I did a right click, quick actions, refactorings. I'll pick a constructor, generate everything. Boom. All right, so here I have the data that I'm going to display in my list. Nice, simple data. Okay, now I could just link this from here, but again, I'm going to do this like you have a data structure and data source. So, a way to pull this off is I'm build a data model. Again, right click, add a new folder called data. This is going to simulate or mock me having a database. Inside of my data, I'm going to build a new folder, new class called data class. Same way I did it before, class. And I need to make sure I can get to my data, so I'm going to add a using up here. Name my project is binding video, so name your project dot models. That gives me access to my data class. Like before, I'm gonna make sure this is public. This one's gonna be a little simpler. I'm going to use my conversion class here. I'm going to build here an array. And equals new conversion 4. I'm going to put four elements in my array. I'll create a simple constructor here. And what I'll do inside this constructor is I'll just set my four values. Pause it here so that you don't have to watch, and I'll come back. Alright, so I filled in the rest of my data array. 
I've got my four objects there, kilograms, grams, ounces, pounds. All right, so that's my data. I'm going to use this now. I'm going to go back to my main page XAML. I'm going to add a couple usings up here. Same thing as before. I want to access the stuff that's my data in my models folder. It doesn't really matter the order. And I'm going to create a list inside here. First, I'm going to create a variable in my type data class. I need an A there, or data B's. It's public data class and data class. See how it's yelling at me about data class? C sharp allows me I didn't know I ran this. C sharp allows me to minimize this. So to minimize this, I can just simply use new. I don't necessarily like that because all the other environments I'm used to, I have to use the class name, but that's pretty clever. Alright, so it's running. Let's stop it so I can go back to coding. All right, so now I'm going to create my reusable list. I've got a variety of choices I can use here. I can use list, I can use collection, or I can use observable collection. Arguably, observable collection is the one you use the most. It's got the ability to interact. I have events to handle with it. I have a variety of tasks. If you're just displaying to the screen, list will work. So I'm going to try using observable collection here. Why can't do that? So observable collection. I'm going to make this of my data type conversions. Then we use the new cook um, constructor called there. Yep, that updated. Just had to be patient enough. All right, so data list is get it written onto the screen. Um, I need an on-screen element for it to go. Um, I chose observable collection because, as I said, it's the one you're most likely to use moving forward. I need to fill this. So inside of my main page. I'm going to walk through this. Um, is this the most optimal way to do this? Probably not. But it works. So I've built my data list. It has the objects from my database. I'm now going to bind the list to my screen. Okay, in order to do so, I'm going to go to my main page XAML. I'm going to have to add some information up above. I need to name the page instead of binding object to the entire page. This will give me access to the entire code behind. So I'm going to give this a name. Make sure you don't name it main page. Don't name it the same thing that's there. Dot net gets really grumpy. So the binding context to at this. Okay, so I'm now linked. Oh, I forgot my bindings. So put some curly brace around. That's why the color looked wrong. All right, so set my bindings to it. X colon reference this colon page. So now I have access to anything that's in the code behind. So any of the variables you have here is are accessible here. They include single variables, etc. I'm now going to build a collection view. And in building a collection view, essentially what you have to do is you have to set the collection view, set the item source, and then build an item templates. 
the item tab so it takes a little bit of effort because it's what makes the output look nice. Um, so let me start this. Let me do a collection view. I'm going to name it. So I'm calling it my con conversion collection. So I'm going to set the item source equal to the data list of beyond the scenes. Okay, so that comes from here. Now inside of here, I need to add an item template and then define what the template looks like. So we do item templates. Then we'll put a data template inside of it. This item template and the data template are going to define how the item looks on the screen. Uh, I'm going to set up a, a small little grid here and then put items in the grid. You can do whatever you want here, but I like the grid. It looks kind of pretty. You could also use a horizontal layout, etc. I named it out of convenience in case I needed it. I did not need it, but it's helpful to have a name. So I'm going to build my grid, my row, my columns. I'm also going to pause it here and do this off screen so you don't have to watch. All right, so I've built my grid. I've got two columns, one row. And then I'm going to build what happens inside of these rows. Okay, so I'm going to add two labels. And I'm going to put binding values here. And these values are going to come from my conversions class. Set whatever font attributes you want. Oops, I'm fun. Keep hitting the run button when I don't want to. So I'm going to set the font to medium. And if you've not worked with a grid before, here's how we set these up. We'll choose what row it's in. These things are zero based. So it's saying the name is in the first column. Then the definition or the multiplication will be the second column. Again, that comes from your conversion class. Stick with medium. Okay, so the item template and the data template will work with my observable collection behind the scene. And I should now get my list on my screen. Let's find out. Here we go. And there they are. I got my two columns. The data comes right from my data collection and my database behind the scenes. Since I use observable collection, I could create click events on these things. So I could theoretically use this slider and then instead of having to be pounds, make this whatever the first object is. Say slide down here and it's 99.6 grams. Click that and it will automatically convert to ounces. Observable collection allows that. I'm not going to handle that, but it allows it. All right, um, thanks for watching, um, good luck.